Happiness cannot be determined at any point in one's life. Happiness is the sum total of the entire life. <laughs> to be Sa'id or to be Shaqi is not determined at any one point in your life. And this is why the Western pursuit of happiness is a psychological state. And this is why they will use antidepressants to get that state. Because they want to be happy psychologically, not realizing that happiness is a spiritual state, not a psychological state. It's a spiritual state of being, according to Aristotle, of being virtuous. In our tradition, of being uh, amongst the people of Sa'ada, which are the, the Su'ada, are the people, Taha, ma anzalna alayka al-Quran, li tashqa. We didn't send this book for you to be miserable. Mafhum and mukharafa anzalnahu li tasad. We sent it for you to be happy. فَبِذَارِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Let them rejoice in the book and the sunnah. It's better than what they're gathering from dunya that they're trying to make them happy. Because every pursuit in life is a pursuit for happiness. If you ask somebody, what do you want in life? They say, I want money. Money is not an end. Because you'll say, why do you want money? And they'll say, well, uh, because it'll give me freedom. Why do you want freedom? You can keep asking them that. In the end, they have to come to the conclusion what they really want is to be happy. And that's why happiness is an end in itself. It's not a means to another thing. I'm not happy to fall in love. I fall in love to be happy. I'm not pursuing wealth merely to the pursuit of what, unless it's pathological. Because you, you, you can have, like, there are people that are pathologic, they're, they're, they're diseased people, they have pathologies, like the miser who collects wealth, not, he doesn't benefit from it. He's actually poor. Because wealth is what you, Use it's not what you have. Your risk, there's a khilaf amongst the ulama, but the risk really is what you use, not what, what you have. Because you might be acquiring it for somebody else, and you don't even know it. So happiness is, is what we want, but you are going to, to have difficulties in your life. And that's why you have to be spiritually fortified for them. This is... This is the nature of life. This is a daru hum. It's an abode of anxiety. It's an abode of depression. It's an abode of concern. Right? This is the great noble truth that, uh, you know, the Eastern traditions, that life is suffering. Life is suffering in that the nature of life is its impermanence. And things that are impermanent will never give you true satisfaction. The only thing that will satisfy you in life is what's permanent. And the only thing that is permanent is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why no matter what you're going after in dunya, it's all an illusion that you're pursuing if you're not pursuing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be in a state of knowing your Lord. Because with that comes happiness. With that comes contentment. And this is why the awliya are the most contented people in the world. Nothing phases them. It doesn't mean they don't have fear. They can have fear. It doesn't mean they don't get depressed. The Prophet ﷺ got depressed. We know that, that he had huzn. When his son died, he grieved. Grief is a human condition. It's not a negative thing. In fact, grief can open up a door that might have been closed before it happened. And Allah will often put grief into your life in order for you to call on Him and come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why you have to embrace the, that gift. Because if you're a believer, it's a gift. You might not see it, but it is a gift. This is our belief. عَجِبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمَنِ فَإِنَّ أَمْرُهُ كُلَّهُ لَهُ خَيْرٌ Sahih Muslim, Sahih al Rumi said, our Prophet said, how wondrous is the believer's affair because all of it is good. In abtadahu, sabr. If he tries him, if God tries you, he's patient. 
And if he gives you, he's grateful. Now, there are those who will see the gift in the tribulation, and then that's the highest maqam. قَلِيلٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ Few of my servants are always grateful. Shakur is always grateful. Right? And what does, what does Sh Iblis want? He wants to make sure that we're not grateful. That's his whole game, is to remove gratitude from your heart. So either you have patience or you have gratitude. But to be in any other state is to be in a dangerous state. And shaitan wants you, he says, you will find most of them aren't grateful. That's what he wants, ingratitude. Why? Because he's an ingrate. Kufr means ingratitude. Kufran and ni'mah. Iblis is an ingrate. And this is why, see, Muslims now, they complain all the time. They complain about their hukam. They complain about their uh, social conditions, their economic conditions. It's all complaining. That's all Muslims do. We are the best complainers on the planet. And the thing about complaining, Allah will just give you more to complain about. You, you, want, you want something to really complain about? And then people say, wow, that, we, we thought it was bad then. Look at it now. <laughs> right? That's what the Prophet said at the end of time. The fitan turafiqu ba'duha ba'da. Kullu man asada fitan yaqul mahlakati mahlakati. I'm finished, I'm finished. And then the next one that comes, it's easier than the first. And this is why, if you're not grateful, لَأَنْشِكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ Right? If you're grateful, I'll increase you. But, but if, you're, if you're an ingrate, نَعَدَابِ الشَّدِيدِ my, my adab is fierce. If you want to be ungrateful, I'll give you plenty to be ungrateful about. And that's why gratitude is the best state to be in. The best state to be in is to be in a state of just thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If, if, if you're in aman, thank God you're not in chaos. If you're in chaos, right, thank God you have iman. At least you have some frame to understand it. Because there's people in chaos that lose their faith. Right? And, and the idea of losing faith, I mean, may Allah not try any of us with great tribulation.